The story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. Our intel indicates that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. No cars. They could be out. Could be lying low. The satellite scans were inconclusive. Only one way to find out, I'm afraid. Bodies. Male and female. Early 30s. Executed. I see them. Bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork, all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The owners? Don't think so. The house is registered to a non existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Forty-seven. That computer. See if you can't access it. Encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, Forty-seven. I thought so. This should be interesting. Here we go. For the office computer, no doubt. I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. 
a message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector? Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage 247. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, oh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. The Mercs have discovered your boat, 47. They're on high alert, combing the beach for intruders. Proceed with caution. Hmm. No way to get past them unnoticed. I suggest you cause a distraction, 47, and make it a loud one. Paid off. The client has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past, your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeier stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. 
but this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold, and so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. Hang on, 47. Robert Knox's calendar shows a meeting with a Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the U.S. military. It must be related to that robot. Maybe you can find Mendez somewhere. Taxes and has a lot of money in the bank. I suspect Knox will be for the market. According to sources at the FBI. I may only be a tech reporter, but I have ambition. That is Ted Mendez one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew with it. Hey, the guy's a genius. How are you? And you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Well, 
last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Hi, uh, whatever. Mr. Mendez? Right this way, sir. Yes, it's Ben Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Ah, Ted, good to finally see you. Guess traffic was rough. That never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But, luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt war. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics, seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired. WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the... What's the holdup, Mendez? Just scan one of the pictures. Long time no see. Target acquired. Robert Knox. Damn. Robert Knox down. Now for the heir to the Constant Empire. Some kind of accident. I don't know. Doesn't look good. Knox is lead and Sierra Knox is neck and neck. Well, let's just say she's got a bad case of intermittent explosive disorder. Or Dr. Sorensen. First, he almost loses a patient to a seemingly harmless case of dehydration. And now, he has to deal with this guy suffering from urinary retention. Don't forget, this nice. race is hey. all about just getting just some miles of school. It's as much about the car's stamina and technology as it is about the driver's rejection. But given his track record this past few days... Well... At least we know his mind. The race is entering its final lap, 47. 47, the race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. Oh, Dr. 
unlocked. Paging Miss Knox. Paging Miss Sierra Knox. The doctor will see you now. Excellent oh, work, doctor. 47. So Sierra Knox should be on her way to the emergency doctor. area. I, I forget your name. Yes? I'm Sierra Knox. You paged me. I have an appointment. Ah, oh, Miss Knox. If you can just take a seat, please. Oh, great. Miss Knox, I'm ready for you. Let's do this. All right, Doc. Where'd you want me? Miss Knox, come on in. Have a seat and relax. So, what's on the menu? Something that'll take care of this hideous pain in my neck, I hope. I promise. Once I'm done, you won't feel a thing. Hi. So, what's in this thing anyway, Doc? Mostly floral extracts, hemlock, belladonna, aconite. It's designed to be fast and efficient. Fast and efficient. I like that. Wait, wait, Belladonna? Isn't that poisonous? Yes. Should I be concerned? I'm not. Just relax. It'll be over soon. Got a problem? You know what? I do feel refreshed. Thanks, Doc. My pleasure, Miss Knox. Uh, I... I don't feel... I don't feel well, Doctor. Don't worry. It'll be over soon, Miss Knox. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> If you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, 
I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. Good morning, 47. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the malicious strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision-makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed Sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers, armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself and Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. Delgado guy we've been hearing about? Sounds like he's got money to spare. Ubi? Lucky guy. I wish I could afford one of his pieces. Ah, his work isn't that impressive. All he really seems to be doing is touch up and cover up the botched work on that reality TV show of his. Improving on stuff that looks like crap probably gets you too hard, you know? I think I'll
That is P Power, real name Paul Powers, celebrity tattoo artist and reality TV star. Just browsing. I'm trying to make a phone call here. Buzz off, will you? Ay, andate la mierda. You have to get me the hell out of here. I'm stuck in some tequila bar. Okay. In the middle of the nowhere. I can't get out. Dexy, send help. All right. Let me know if you need anything cold or drink. That's it. Mate, I'm telling you, I've been in some crazy shit before, but this takes the cake. Mm-hmm. You know where I'm supposed to be right now? The Delgado Mansion. Just knock on the front gate, they said. And then what? Walk in and tattoo the world's most notorious cartel boss. I guess you how that's not easy. I heard he kills people. Just for fun. Imagine what he'd do to me if I messed up. I'm sure he's dangerous. But this is why if you need to look out for Caballero. I'm a dead man. Yeah, Dexy. Dexy is. Dexy. Dexy. Damn it, can you hear? Oh, this damn music. Dexy, hang on, I'm heading outside. Dexy, it's me again. I think this drug lord is gonna kill me. If I mess up, he's going to kill me. You have to help me here. Call me ASAP. You're entering the lion's den, 47. Tread carefully. Practically everyone here is dangerous, not least Rico Delgado himself. Nice day. Ah, well, you know, just security precaution. Let's go, parcero. We will see. Mrs. Delgado wanted to meet you. She's a big fan. She said thank you to Rico. Uh, my sister in got another one. It was supposed to be a tribute to her son, but the guy fucked it up. The big Gustavo ended up looking like a dead chupacabra. When my brother-in-law saw the tattoo, he went down to the guy's house and shot him dead. Which was kind of dumb because he was the only that was this around for a half a time. That's quite a story. I know. That is Catalina Delgado, wife to Rico Delgado for the past 11 years. Enrique, it's so nice you. Be power. It's such an honor to meet you. I just love your show. That episode where you tattoo the heart of the heart of the bad time policeman while they're administrating CPR. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. A great moment. I cherish the memory to this day. Ah, oh, see. So, Rico has this tattoo on his neck and he insists it's supposed to be based on a photo of me. I'm not a fool, Mr. Powers. My nose never looked like that, not even before the operation. And sure, I've had a few ticks done here and there, but nothing as drastic as that. I want you to make it look like me, not some young skank. I'll do my very best, Mrs. Delgado. Ah, oh, Chico, let me just grab a quick selfie with you, all right? Sure, why not? Yay! <laughs> just look this way. Oh, 
can see. Wow, we look so good together. This is great. Hey, so far, so good, 47. Now to leave your mark on Mr. Delgado. So, this is the famous Pete Bauer, tattoo artist to the stars. Huh. You don't exactly look like you do on TV, do you? There's something different about you. Cariño, don't insult our guest. He's obviously not been sitting in a stylist chair for days, but this is Pete Bauer. Who else would it be? Well, what about those cheekbones? The guy on TV didn't have cheekbones like that. Hey, Rico, enough. You know they fix all that in post-production. Just let the man work. Okay, fine. Whatever you say. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get this thing fixed. You are really getting on my nerves now. It's not every day we have celebrities visiting, you know? I find your constant photography very annoying, dear. You're being such an ass right now, Rico. Whoa, hey, Rico, don't worry. I've got this under control. Hey, the two guy. I'm watching you. One wrong move, you know, I start peeing. You hear me? I need you to calm down a bit, Jose. Just doing what's necessary, Rico. You're taking it too far, Jose. No guns. Afraid I can't do that, Patron. This person might get the jump on us. So what are we waiting for, huh? I'm here, I'm ready. Get on with it. Hey, relax, Jose. We're fine. Just making sure the script doesn't try anything funny. Hey, I need you to stand down. Stop waving that thing around. No way I'm letting my guard down around this stranger, Rico. Cut! I swear to God! What? Have I not allowed to update my social channels anymore? Is that it? Can't you just go do that somewhere else? I'm sorry that my social life is ruining your concentration. I'm not paying you to just hang around, amigo. Get that needle to work, or you'll be sorry. Calm down, all right? Everything's okay here. Better safe than sorry, boss. You're making me nervous, Jose. Put that thing away. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing my job, patron. You doing this just to annoy me, Kat? Just... You need to keep still, Mr. Delgado. I wouldn't want to stab you by accident. You heard the man, Catalina. Leave us now. Fine. Have it your way. But that tattoo better look exactly like me when you're done with your new BFF, Rico. Hey, listen. You're taking this new bodyguard job a little too seriously, Jose. Just doing what's necessary, Rico. You're taking it too far, Jose. No guns. No, 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 no. I'm not willing to take any risks here, Jefe. Hey, Jose, I need you to leave us alone now. You're too wound up right now. You understand? All right, boss, all right. But I'll be back in a little while if I don't hear from you the way you want it. Oh, finally. So be some quiet. Can I finish my work now? <laughs> do what you do best, man. You got it. Rico Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done.
Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47. Search of a spiritual release. Come on in, my friend. I feel free to join us. Everyone is in the eyes of their spirits. Martinez is waiting for you in her office upstairs. Go right in. Well, well. The famous shaman decides to show up after all. I'm pleased to finally put a face to the myth. I was beginning to think you didn't exist, what with your not replying to any of my inquiries. I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Martinez. All right. I need you to get over to the construction site on the outskirts of the village. The workers there uncovered a pile of old bones and I've taken the opportunity to grab some undeserved recreational time. I need you to go over there as soon as possible and wave your magic wand or do an interpretive dance or whatever it is you do. I can do that. You can walk with me if you don't know the way. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Just don't take too long. I'm an important person and have many things to do. Very well. I haven't been to the construction site in some time, actually. It'll be good to get to see the new equipment. It was certainly expensive. Do you know how hard it is to transport a cutting edge brand new cement mixer and pour around in the jungle? Very. I can only imagine, Miss Martinez. Taita, my father told me. Your refaction ritual you performed on it last week. The shaman is here for the cleansing ritual. Taita, so good to finally have you here. You have been sorely missed. Happy to be here. So, uh, here's the problem. We're digging some holes for the foundation. Now we come across these well bones. Turns out they're human, and the workers seem to think they're part of some old grave. Sounds likely. Yeah. So now they're on strike. Won't work until the site is cleansed. This is where you come in, no? You think you can, you can help us out? I'll do my best. Excelente. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. The site is clean now. We just got 
Kaita. It was a beautiful ritual. Excellent. A beautiful ritual. I could genuinely feel the spirits bless the worthwhile endeavor we are pursuing here. They're at peace now. Expertly moved onto the afterlife by your Taita. I am confident this is the end of it. Men, muchachos, time to get back to work. Let's warm up the new cement mixer. That beauty will blow up any human remains in seconds. Nobody will ever disturb the dead down there again. Nicely done. Looks like the foreman is going to tour the site and show some of the machinery to Andrea Martinez. This might be your chance, 47. I am eager to get this site back on track. It is. I just know when that's taken. This is Benita Martinez. Very much aware. I will drive them in a car. Excellent. Mr. Delgado needs to have the plant up and running very soon. It's back to the One. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. Si sería tan amable, do you mind giving me some private thing? Neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message. Encrypt and send. source checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just the company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. Good evening, 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, 
We have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia. And one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China Sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown, but we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shaw, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive Maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. Forty-seven, our intel suggests the Maelstrom is hiding somewhere in the city slums. I've marked the headquarters of the Crows on your map. Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck. Maybe I should try something else. In fact, this... Photograph and a note addressed to Sagar the Barber. This looks like a very recent picture of the Maelstrom. With this in hand, picking him out in a crowd should be possible. Forty-seven, that man there. He resembles the Maelstrom. Try to get close to him for a visual ID. No, that wasn't him.
47. That nose. Those eyes. That can only be Wazir Kale, the Maelstrom. Identification confirmed. Infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Let's finish this one. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one. 47. This is one of the Mumbai Chawls. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. Might be worth looking into. Keep it just the scope right now. I'll never make that shot. Well, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai, and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator known as the Kashmirian. <sighs> I'll never get that scope adjusted with this horrible viewfinder. What I wouldn't give for a world-class sniper rifle right Good now. Good thinking, 47. Now, if we could only make Rangan appear in that window somehow. Karen Dahl, a.k.a. the Kashmirian, was born in the U.S., but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here, and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead? Rongan wants you to go and get him as soon as you're done mixing your fancy colors there. You got it? Fine. If I don't finish it, Rongan will kill me. If I do, the artist... No. Checked and Beautiful. 
मैग्निफिसेंट यूज ऑफ कलर्स एंड फॉर्म क्या बात है इफ द न्यू पीस कैच इज माई पॉसिबल नेचर लाइक दिस I will have nothing short of a masterpiece on my hands. I'll be the envy of it. Been fine today, sir. I guarantee a perfect execution, Mr. Wright. All right. Chala, let's get this done. I expect this to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Osem. I'm a busy man. Here. All right, 47. Let's see if the aim of our Kashmirian friend is true. Look, hmm. once the word gets out and my art appreciating friends see it, he of all will be ringing off the hook i can't wait hold your breath for a moment mr rangan that's the reason i told you i wouldn't pay for the commission by the way i'm not stingy no no not at all but if i'm already paying you in exposure hmm? well let's not overdo it huh? you know i prefer cash over exposure clench your fist please <laughs> who does it <laughs> but sometimes exposure can be worth more than just money Look, in this case, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just wait and see. When you're done with this job, the contracts will be rolling in. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Rangan. Can you look up a bit? Thank you. That shot came from the Chauls. It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead, and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Hold up 47. The Kashmirian is on the move. He's heading for another flat inside the Chauls. This might be worth investigating. If nothing else, we may get a lead on who his client is. Where is she? 47. It appears the Kashmirian is using this room as a base of operations. Let's see what he's up to in here. So, the Kashmirian is scoping out a bridge in an area primarily used as a laundry business. Interesting. It recently changed ownership and now belongs to Vanya Shah. It looks like he's found a new target and is waiting for her to get on the bridge. Perhaps your mentoring days aren't entirely over yet. Shah. Go to your meeting. All right, so I need to understand a few things here. Nobody keeps track of time in any way. Your foreman didn't really care so much about time. It was all about getting things done. So how did he track that? I can't see any of his old files here. I don't know where they might be. All right. How about the workload? How do you guys keep track of how many orders you go through in a day? The old foreman did all that. I think he kept most of it in his head actually. That was one of the things Miss Shah didn't really like. that and the fact that he would give us breaks she doesn't like giving breaks it's it i see thank you i don't know where the papers are if i could just find them it would make my life a lot easier but the old foreman he hid them somewhere if i knew why i wouldn't have to look for them would i i just want to make sure i understand everything If I show up for the bridge meeting with Miss Shah and I'm not prepared, well, let's just say I don't want that to happen. All right, I'll speak to you later. Surely those logs must be somewhere. Think, think. I can't meet Shah without them. Trouble, Mister. I'll just leave, okay? I need some help right now. Take it to your head. The way she's. I'm ready for my meeting with Miss Shah now. Miss Shah's been waiting for this all day. The foreman's ready to meet up with Miss Shah on the bridge. We're heading there now. Follow me to the bridge. It's 
just through here. Miss Sharp. So, that's the new guy, huh? How long is he going to last, you think? A week? Depends on what the Queen decides to do with him, I guess. He looks tough enough. Might last a week in the pits. Maybe even two. Maybe he's been working really hard on that report of his. Maybe she'll actually keep him on. I can't imagine that. He's been hiding inside that little office of his all day, afraid to come out. I don't think he has what it takes. The new foreman finally oh, graces hi. us with his presence. What do you have to report? Well done, 47. You've I managed to lure Von Shaw out into the open. Anything could happen here. Tell me more. Well, the objective is find the root of the problem, work to get close to it, and then eradicate it. I like your thinking. How would you approach the task you see before you? My usual method is prepare intensely, study the problem, learn everything I can, analyze all approaches. The idea is to gently nudge people to do what I want. And then, once the objective is in my sights, perfect execution. Not afraid to spill some blood in the process? Not at all. In fact, I find that happens quite often. I like you, Fawn. I think this could be the beginning of a very fruitful relationship. I aim to please, Miss Shah. I don't see you down there, little ants, scurrying about at your own pace, taking unnecessary breaks, drinking my water, wasting my money. You have had it easy up until now. But your new foreman will bring some order to this rebellious behavior. The days of slacking are over. You hear me? Huh? That is Vanya Shah taking care of 47. Are you planning on outsourcing all your work to the Kashmirian from now on? Mission completed. Time to find an exit. This was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. Looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. I knew you would. You've come a long way, 47. And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison, where Father trained us, shaped us into killers for Providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact, you and I. Do this. We both lose. 
there was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject Six. Your name is Subject Six. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were going to tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. <sighs> Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time, but after Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote. It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away, he and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. I remember. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka, 
Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right. So here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow Client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail, a Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Mr. Nolan Cassidy? Um, can say that I do. Well, he's, uh, he's interested in the Schmidt house down the road. You know, the one that police shut down after the, well, incident. I'm not really from around here, senor. I don't know anything about the scene. Well, never mind. He can wait a little longer. I need to squeeze a couple more of these beauties down. Hello. Welcome to Granny's. Welcome to Granny's. We guarantee that you'll never re- Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. I just love to clean up other people's mess. All right. Hmm. All right, I'm on it now. Odd. Hmm. 
hi. Uh, whatever. Oh, no! I don't feel so good. Oh, no! Penetrate the house for sale, Frank. There's still a substantial police presence in the town, because... Aren't you the Sir, realtor? I will have I've to been waiting you hours for you. Through. Mr. Cassidy, Security. I'm sorry for the delay. I'm ready to take you to the house. About time. Let's go. You know which one it is, right? It's the last one on the right, far end of the road. I've had my eye on this place for quite some time. Let's see what sort of secrets she holds. This is the downstairs living room. It is most commonly used for watching television and other recreational purposes. Large room with two easy to get to exits, dark floors, Hide stains easily. A room with lots of potential. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it in here. What else can you show me? Here's the basement. The usual boiler elements are to be found down here. And it seems a room with a safe of some sort. Now that is more like it. That looks just like a vault. This... this is very interesting. It's nice work, 47. This is Let's hope like he doesn't set off the alarm news. somehow. Very nice indeed. All right, let me have a look at this thing. Advanced Kronstadt Matrix Laser Home Security System. <laughs> we used to break these open for training at the Academy. The thing about these systems is, most homeowners are lazy. So, they don't reset the factory settings and enter their own codes. Let's just try the standard admin code, just for fun. Well, what do you know? Looks like Schmidt was a bigger amateur than I imagined. Frank, go outside and check the garden. I want to know how visible this vault is from the outside. Anything sticking out of the ground, weird sloping things like that. You got it, sir. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it again, 1.1? Sounds about right. Hmm, I suppose that's not unreasonable. And this vault unit? Looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. Yes, quite interesting. And a nice looking safe in here too. Any idea what the previous owner was using this for? No idea. Maybe a mausoleum. Huh, that's weird. But I think I can come up with some good uses for it. All right, I think I've seen enough. Janus awaits your attention. So beautiful. I'm really impressed by all the wonderful hey, things you stay have. Stay safe. I wish my husband would let me have that much art inside the house. But he gets, well, <laughs> he doesn't appreciate it the same way I do. Well, Richard and I have similar interests, so it's really not that hard to get him to go along with my ideas. Although, I have to say, it's been challenging to find a good place for my old microfilm viewer. Right now, it's just collecting dust in the attic. Microfilm? That's an 
interesting thing to collect. Well, it's sort of a hobby that never really took off. Besides, I don't have any microfilm to play on the viewer anyway. I'm not sure I could find any either. Hmm. Well, Janus Next Door collects all kinds of ancient memorabilia. He might have a roll or tape or whatever it is that sort of thing uses. I'm sure he'd be delighted to lend you something. That's very good. Back in the day, Janus was known for his obsessive need to archive and keep memorabilia. If he has any microfilm in his house, it might contain something interesting. Janus, Cold War spymaster and the first Providence Constant. I wonder how much he remembers, how little he cares. Janus is looking for an old group photo. It might be interesting to see who's on it. The first annual gathering of the Ark Society. Hmm, that rings a bell. If Janus was its founder, perhaps he's still attending these gatherings, 47. This could be valuable information indeed. One of Janus's old microfilms. It might contain important information. All you need now is to find a device to read it on. Clearly, Janus is a meticulous man. This microfilm contains a lot of heavily redacted minutes from what appears to be a yearly event of some sort. Plenty of initials and project code names that don't ring any bells. Janus is mentioned by name throughout, however. This is a very important find, 47. This takes me back. The night I passed the torch. End of an era as constant. We had the Vienna Philharmonic played that night. Empty concert hall except for the two of us. A rare moment indeed. A good talk. Hands shaken. Honor among men. As it should be. I wonder if he remembers it as vividly as I do. I should ask him when we meet again soon. So, that piece of music sparked a memory in Janus's mind, and we now have confirmation that he and the Constant will be meeting each other soon. Great work, 47. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with the Constant at an event related to the Ark Society, and we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. Actions of the first constant catch up with him. 
death feels like an easy way out for a man like James. Still. We are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, we'll make our final move. You make it sound so easy. Society. One of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite. Billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted. No names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but... Like it happened to someone else. <sighs> your gift and your curse. What they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes. Found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. all our families do you think you feel more betrayed than i do get some perspective please janus is dead lucas gray is about to join him and a cornered animal is twice as dangerous let's be perfectly clear we were not exposed the threat is neutralized we are back on track even so from this point on we expect you to take no there is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, Madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? 
A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb, only to find out he's a Providence operative. I've been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Surrey, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing. Having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Uh, we should have expected something like this. So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters Zoe and Sophia Washington. Two young, ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right. Change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the Ark line. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank, one of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have it coming. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. space and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for ARC membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All set? Excellent. Follow me, please. So, what do you think? Well, you weren't kidding. This place is pretty epic. Where are we anyway? 
I'm not sure. Some old nightly stronghold. The architects use it all year round for ideation purposes, but tonight's the only time the rest of us get together. So, you decide on what to buy from the catalogue? One of the bunkers, for sure, and I'm curious about the crime for I think you're gonna like it here, Logan. What a seven digit tuition fee. Not better. What else? Uh... Ah, yes. Zoe Washington, one of our newly appointed chairwomen, has prepared a brand new official ceremony scheduled to take place in the upper court yard. A stirring ode to rebirth and the enduring spirit of mankind. I believe that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy your evening. The bar is right up ahead. Sir, hope you're well. symbolizes the collapse of civilization from which the Ark Society emerges unscathed and triumphant. Ah, rebirth. I guess. What's new is that the Master of Ceremonies will light the effigy on fire with Zoe Washington inside it. Huh. A bit showy, wouldn't you say? Hey, whatever sells. Say that again. 
Awesome. Mr. Fenner, excellent. Well, I thought you could. Fenner, thank Christ. Ready when you are. A handsome pledge, and yet, a drop in the ocean. Zoe Washington, the Ark Society recognizes you as our Founder's rightful successor. Our inspiration, our guiding light, the custodian of our future. Excellent work, 47. Enjoy the spotlight. Patrons of the Ark Society, you are part of a select, chosen few. Our founder, Janus, showed us how to survive. But survival is not enough. We must live, and we must soar. The Ark Society must not only commit itself to survival, but to progress, be it our next home in the stars or the next step in human evolution. This is the eternal purpose of the elite. Not just to lead, but to lead from the front. When the time comes, and all comes tumbling down, when mankind retreats once more into caves of superstition, we will keep the fire alight. We will be the torchbearers, the trailblazers and pioneers. Do, do not feel guilty for your privilege. Be proud, be fearless, for the future is ours to shape. Triggers this ancient death trap and, you know, murder and mayhem ensues. But I thought those two were lovers. On and off. Currently way off, which explains the added security. I don't follow. Think why the need for an alarm system? We're all filthy rich. Except. Ah, I see. Blake thinks Sophia might try and steal back the necklace before it's sealed in the Ark of the Legacy.
Have a good evening. Smooth, 47. The Sparrow's got nothing on you. Sophia. Blake? I almost didn't recognize you without a knife in my back. I messed up. I see that now. Can we talk? <laughs> this should be good. Follow me. Fine night. Excellent, 47. Let's give Sophia her heart's desire, shall we? You've got one minute. I did wrong by you, Sophia. I see that now, and I want to make amends. Here, this is rightfully yours. Well, well. Look who comes crawling back. Believe us. You know, we lost three men because of you. Wickus was crushed by a rolling boulder. Jago fell into a pit trap. And Zoe and me? We only escaped the arrows by using one of the local guides as a human shield. Now, this is a nice gesture, but it doesn't even begin to make amends. I know. May I? Fine, but not too tight. You know, I thought about sending the boys after you. Grab the necklace and cut your throat ear to ear. You probably wonder why I didn't. The truth is, you beat us, Blake. I don't deny it. And I can't very well get even if you're dead. So, consider yourself warned.
both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him. Washington's are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? Hello. How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves. No signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Pinewood's assassin. Move. Partners no more. I take it. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. Good evening, sir. You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor built his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. Has Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you? I wonder. Just keep walking. But I guess when you're a joke dealer. For what it's worth, Janus always found Ortmeyer's project distasteful, not to mention inefficient. But alas. Sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Oh, I know. I take it this is not an ICA-sanctioned operation. What exactly does Miss Burnwood plan to achieve by targeting her clients? Violating her own code? She's doing it for us. Us? Oh, I see. The penny drops. I should have known. How does a man leave no trace by not existing in the first place? Lucas Gray, or was it Subject 6? He died when the Institute went up in flames, but no body was ever produced. And unlike you, his rage never faded. So, now you want the partners, the men behind the curtain who've caused you all this pain. Mr. Edwards, still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. 
That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlisles, the Stuyvesants. Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you were so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet... Something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one, Miss Burnwood, is untouchable.